Claire Johnson. I'm pr present. Thank you. Matt McGrath. Here. Chris Verrill. Here. Tina Zecker. Here. Thank you. Um, our pretty consistent reminder to please check out Flagstaff 365 for upcoming events and music, culture, art, and sciences. <clears throat> Thank you, staff. Any public participation? No, I have not received any requests for um, public participation. I think not either. And from us, Chair. Great. Thank you. Um, moving forward to the approval of minutes. Did everyone have an opportunity to look at the May minutes? And is there any discussion about those? Just a request. At, at the very last note in the minutes, it said that I'd requested that those who dissent have their names in. That's accurate, but not the spirit of it. Uh, any, I want all votes uh, notified, not just those who dissent. OK, I think I think one can decipher that if it's a unanimous vote yeah. based on roll call. Do you still want everybody named? Uh, not if it's a unanimous vote. If there, if there, if there are differing opinions, I would like them identified. Okay, good. Um, I was going to mention later on that staff is working on that, but I will mention it again just for the minutes. But thank you for clarifying that. Is does that need to be clarified in the minutes? Well, I just want to make sure that that's actually reflected in the discussion versus clarifying it after the fact. And I, you know. That's not how I recall it being said. So I so I guess that's a point of order, Chair. If Chris here, uh, it, it was my intent. It was your intent. Point. And I thought I'd clarify that. The point is, if there are differing opinions, they should be recorded. OK. Opinions or votes? I mean, I'm not trying to get yeah. into semantics. No, yeah. what, what, how did the minutes read right now? Uh, Commissioner Brown requesting having the minutes reflect who opposed when votes are not unanimous. But you would like all differentiating votes. I'd like all yes. votes recorded if it's not unanimous. I just asked. I just asked everybody. Is that how you understood Commissioner Barrow at the meeting? It's fine with me if, on it, if it's amended. I'm not an objection, but I just know that that's a a difference in how you record the minutes. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to take up the issue. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about it at the end of the at the end of the meeting and uh, my two from Chris. And so we can discuss it again and you can clarify uh, exactly what you'd like. At this point, we can um, move forward with the minutes as they are. If you want any corrections to the minutes, then now would be the opportunity. But the issue itself. Uh, is up for discussion a little bit later in the agenda. So I, I would like that correction. OK. So did you communicate that clearly to Craig regarding how that should read? I think so. Yeah, I got it. OK. Yes, Any other uh, communication about the minutes, folks? Just please note that the Commissioner Garcia is now present. Thank you. Welcome. If there's no more discussion regarding the minutes, may I entertain a motion to approve them as presented? I will say that I sent Craig just a couple of editorial things that are not substantive at all. Um, you may need to resend that because I did not receive that. OK. Does anybody want to move to present the minute to, I'm sorry, accept the minutes as presented? As corrected. As corrected? Uh, so moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes as corrected. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? The motion carries and the minutes are approved. That owl's getting the work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know because we're all making noises. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. Moving forward to announcements. 
Okay, I'm going to start off our announcements. Um, just going to ask people to have a little comment on their art ex experience. Um, the staff, uh, you know, hosted a table uh, in Heritage Square on Saturday for Art X, and we made a lot of swag. We made stickers and things to promote our program. So they're at the head of the table. If you didn't get a chance to see them or take some, please do. Um, and I think later on, um, we're also going to discuss, uh, Chair Cruz is going to discuss uh, the idea of us hosting uh, more tables at more events, because I think it, it was really a, a very upbeat experience for staff. I will say I got to um, eight of the um, installations or events at ArtX myself, um, you know, and they ranged in quality. Um, and, you know, of course, I'm part of the ArtX Festival um, Committee, and so, you know, giving them our feedback, but I really want to do a shout out to Envision um, at the Knacker yes. Gallery. It was really stupendous. Um, I also enjoyed the physicist and the shaman, as well as Pop Goes the Ferret, the experimental rock opera in progress. Um, and I know there were some others at the Ideas Night with uh, Majora Carter, so maybe I'll let them speak to that. Um, you know, some of the things I think the execution of some pieces were a little bit lower than we had hoped. Um, the bridges and then the piece that was on the city hall lawn. Um, so we, you know, we know where there's work. Um, so that I just wanted to kind of go over my just a few impressions. So I don't want to take up all night. But who else was there and who would like to? Um, let let me add to that. And obviously, I'm completely biased. Mm -hmm. um, but we we created an infrastructure that I think will allow us to launch this correctly in 2024. There were a lot of things that worked brilliantly. There were a whole bunch of things that did not, but none of them were hugely structural. They were they were things that were all solvable and we're aware of them, um, including some art exhibit, exhibits that were so sort of cring, cringeworthy. <laughs> but a whole bunch that were brilliant. Um, and a process that will allow us to do things further in advance to give artists more time. So part of it wasn't the artist problem. It was our process problem. Um, and we're aware of that. So, yeah, uh, unbalanced good. And speaking to the process problem, I mean, during the um, committee meetings, planning for the, the artist and the programming, um, we fulfilled, we pretty much seemed like all the money allotment was fulfilled almost to the T. So I think that we were kind of sticking some things in there, you know, just because we could and to see what happened best. So I support what uh, Chris says about the future of this. Also, I would question, I know they don't have to be answered now, but um, did anybody have metrics on visitation or anything like that? That's it. Commissioner McGrath, I saw you at opening night. Any impressions? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I will say I saw the abbreviated, it wasn't opening night, I saw the like the uh, uh, the abridged version of Pop Goes the Ferret after the COVID uh, scare uh, on Saturday morning. So it was a little bit uh, different. I guess the Saturday show is different. Than the Friday. 80 or 90% it was great. I got, was the one I was skeptical <laughs> when I first heard about it. You're right? skeptical about singing weasels? I was skeptical. <laughs> about it. I, was like, I was like, it sounds like it could be great. It also sounds like it could really be awful. Uh, and it was fantastic. <laughs> and it was really in that space was perfect for it. So I thought that was a lot good. Um, and then I agree, Chan, with a lot of what you said. One of the things, like the one on City Hall, one of the things was like, that space is so giant. Like, like the lawn and the paved part, and then here's this kind of little piece there. So I thought that was it. Was, that one was sort of set up to to struggle, right? Uh, because yeah. it was just this tiny little couple, of two walls or three walls on this giant open space. So I think maybe if you know less, if there was more of a uh, some air, some things cl closer together rather than just just scattered around downtown quite so much. But uh, that and then just. Uh, there was there was an awful lot of talk about what we were about to see on uh, that third the ideas night, yeah. uh, the preview, um, right. you know, going through all of the plants and this is what this plant is that that started to drag a little bit. I saw Jonathan was up front doing this. <laughs> <laughs> go go go! If you want to see the show, uh, so I knew that that was recognized. But no, I thought yeah. I was, I thought it was a great start, um, and I think uh, 
Anthony sort of mentioned the money. I think it was really money well spent uh, by by BPAC and the city investing the way we did. When do you think we'll get numbers on the ROI for that action? They did take take uh, counts. Um, so we'll be able to get you those numbers. The question is, is how many of those those numbers were people who came to the city because of? Yeah, and yeah. we're not going to be able to know there's, that. There's a lot of different metrics. I right. just think that we've got to start somewhere. Sure. And then we put a bunch of money behind that. Yep. I'm so sorry, Dan, missed it. We had another obligation, but I, I thought the advertising on it was great. Miss the same and weasels. I missed that. <laughs> yeah. hey, they, there might be no one videotaped it. I'm sure they did. All right, now I know they did. Yeah, there, there may be a, the full opera next year. It was just a rock opera in progress. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could still. Good. Yeah. All right, well, I'm good. Uh, announcement number two is scratched because it's actually a duplication of number five. Um, and then uh, staff announcement number three, I just want to mention, I know I sent it out to you all, but the downtown mile public meeting is at City Hall on Wednesday from 530 to 730. We just had a focus group focused on just one little aspect of the downtown mile, which was the rail bridge. It was, um, I think, uh, you know, it was well attended and people were really had a lot of stories to share with the designer. So we're really excited and, and as you know, um, because this project is ongoing, we're not getting an artist onto the design team proper, but we are gonna work with the landscape architect of all these little elements. And we're gonna try to bring our public art process in every stage that we can. So um, this was the first time we got to do it and, and I was really excited and thank you, Commissioner Beryl and uh, Vice Chair Lebarski for your Participation. That was a fun discussion. It was. Yeah. <laughs> lots of historical information, lots of right, very deep memories of people about that yeah. under the bridge. And uh, it's the first time we've really been able to capture the people participation of um, La Plaza Vieja neighborhood, and it was really appreciated. Yeah. So excited about that. Was that your idea, Jana, or? Yes, it was. <laughs> but I've tried to get them before. I tried to get them to the DCC and it wasn't successful. Yeah. So this is the first time I was successful. <laughs> Thank you for continuing your train. So uh, the first chair announcement is uh, to show appreciation for Vice Chair Lebarski and Commissioner Zecker, who um, are rotating off of uh, the commission. Uh, thank you so much for your service, your time, your commitment. Um, I will take full credit for having recruited Tina, who I think was just wonderful. Um, I'm so sorry that uh, you uh, are ending your term, but we certainly appreciate what you've done for us, Tina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Please know that we will continue to work with you in terms of uh, the Office of Undergraduate Research, and we hope that uh, you'll let us know when um, you need to get students involved. Um, and Sandra, I know you have been on the commission longer than I have. Uh, thank you also uh, for your years of service. We really appreciate your voice and the pretty um, consistent reminders about the importance of sustainability. I really appreciate you being the champion when uh, sometimes the rest of us forget about that very important piece of beautification and public art. So thank you both very much. I'm sorry, as I mentioned, that I'm not there, um, but I I hope that uh, you'll continue to um, keep us in mind as projects come up. I am. I very much, you know, so I've shared our traditional gift. I won't keep a secret about what they are. They uh, are uh, dark sky glasses uh, from George. So, you know, you want to see so them so that you know what you're in, in store for. <laughs> Close your eyes, everyone, just in case. <laughs> Yeah. That is why we have treats today. We decided that it's all a little lighter for today. And, and so, um, but yes, I, you know, obviously, Vice uh, Chair was already also here when I arrived and has just been a, you know, just a wonderful voice 
um, for me, uh, you know, from coming on board, and I just consider her a huge, big ideas person. It's just like, um, you know, even though she always encourages me just to take on BNSF Railroad, I can't always do that. But, but it all, also then trickles down into what happened at this focus group meeting. And then Tina, as I said before, I've been just so happy to make the connection with NAU. I'm going to continue to connect with you and hear you. Um, that has been something that I wanted to do from the very beginning and was just failed as I we talked about over a couple of lunches, but through you, it's been starting, starting to be appreciated very much. I just want to thank all of you. And I, first of all, I, I, I want to actually thank Anthony for welcoming me so many years ago and really being such a good role model um, for how to be a, a helpful um, commissioner and uh, to give gave me and also Jana and Eliza, of course, who's not here, that was so instrumental in, in the work of the, of the commission and Craig, who has just been so, uh, such a so stalwart and uh, <laughs> patient and generous uh, recorder of all of this. But it's just been a pleasure and I am, um, I think, you know, the work of the commission is so important that I was thinking on my way over, you know, paint paradise and put up a parking lot. Part of our job is to make sure that we don't pave it, <laughs> that we also do these really innovative things. Bitch. <laughs> Thanks, Chair, Vice Chair Larsky. <laughs> said it all. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'll just say thank you as well for welcoming me into this. This is something very different from anything I've ever done before, and it's been really interesting to learn um, the side of like the city process, and um, it's opened my eyes. It's, it's interesting now to go out and uh, just like when I saw them wrapping the traffic box, <laughs> I'm driving down the street, and I'm like, hey, we did that. I'm taking a picture as I'm driving by. Um, have a new perspective on what it takes to make things like that happen and how much value it adds to our, our city and our lives. So yeah, I forgot to give photo credit oh, the, the <laughs> weekly to Commissioner Zach. Well, I'm glad that. you might have that might have slipped your mind because you could see all the bugs going across the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Well, I think that's it. Thank you. You both will be missed. Um, Moving forward, uh, the announcement of um, City Council's actions recently. So um, I was uh, appointed to a second, third year term. Um, Carla McCord is coming back for um, a second one year term. And then Claire Edelman Heath uh, was appointed to a three year term. And their first official commission meeting will be in July, and that is when we will also um, take nominations for elections, which will take place in August for a chair and vice chair. So be thinking about if you are interested in um, one of those positions, certainly, and we will again discuss it next month as well in terms of announcements. Um, are there any other announcements from commissioners? No, I just wanted to, uh, uh, since I got skipped over, I wanted to say thank you to Sandra Zabarski and uh, Ms. Zecker for your time on the commission. Um, Sandra, I was hoping for you to spend about 20 minutes lecturing everyone on, <laughs> on, <laughs> on, the, on the things that they haven't figured out yet, because <laughs> we're really going to miss your wealth of knowledge. And um, it was a great support. I couldn't have been the person I was if it wasn't for you being there to help me, uh, help push me along. No, I think that's not true, but thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tina. We're good. Any other announcements, folks? Moving forward, there are no action items um, other than the minutes, which we've already approved. So we'll move on to discussion items. And uh, the first one is the market of dreams.
Um, so I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Coral J. Evans, who is the executive director of the Sunnyside Neighborhood Association of Flagstaff, and of course our former mayor. And um, so we are all familiar with um, Dr. Evans's um, previous beautification and action grant application that we sent to you back in April. Um, and as you know, we the commission discussed and we have invited her back today. So utilizing this as a foundation for her um, presentation today, um, she will discuss not only the community mural project, but other projects and vision and the vision of the market of dreams. And uh, then staff will open the discussion to potential support under city guidelines. Well, thank you so much for having me um, here today. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk about all things Sunnyside. Um, it's my understanding that you have probably seen most of this presentation before, uh, but hopefully I can add um, some additional detail to it. Um, while we're talking about the Sunnyside Market of Dreams, um, I just need to make sure that we are aware that the Market of Dreams is a program of the Sunnyside Neighborhood Association of Flying Staff. And the Sunnyside Neighborhood Association has been around for over 50 years. It is a resident led and driven nonprofit um, that is dedicated to the success of the Sunnyside neighborhood. And so Flagstaff Sunnyside neighborhood is in the heart of our city. It's approximately um, one square mile in size. We have the most diverse group of people ever living in our neighborhood. Something like 28 different languages, a bunch of different skills. Um, we do have 50% of our individuals are Hispanic. Um, the majority of those are from um, our immigrants um, from not only Mexico, but other places that speak Spanish. I need to make sure I'm clear about that. Um, we also have a large population of indigenous people and one of the largest populations of African Americans you will find in our city. Now, the reason why I say that um, and let you guys know those demographics is because our neighborhood is extremely diverse. It's diverse in thought, it's diverse in ethnicity, it's diverse in income, um, and it's diverse in people. And we're talking about art. I think that that's important um, because we have um, many different forms of art in our neighborhood. We're hoping to showcase that. The Market of Dreams was started as a way for us to address the issue of generational poverty in our neighborhood. Um, and so that's our logo. And I don't expect for you to read all of that, but I will just kind of um, gloss over and give you the highlights, right? So for those of you who've been in Flagstaff for years, you will remember something called lead and see. And so at that particular time, uh, this is probably going back 15 to 20 years ago, Sunnyside had a lot of issues, right? We had a high crime rate. We had, um, you know, just some things in our neighborhood that needed to be addressed. At that particular time, a group of citizens got together. They approached the U.S. Department of Justice and they created a strategy for our neighborhood. It was a five-year strategy, much like you have for a business where you are going to weed out things that you don't want, you're going to seed in things that you do. Okay, so we did a lot of work with the Blackstone Police Department, a lot of work with community policing. Um, we, so we weeded out things that we didn't want um, in our neighborhood. And uh, we took back parks, we took back streets, we took back uh, public spaces, um, got rid of, rid of graffiti and litter and things like that. On the other hand, we seeded in things. So we seeded in things like, for example, um, the Sunnyside IMB group, it's civic um, engagement group. We see it in, um, uh, what do you call those places? Um, welcoming places, safe havens for kiddos, right? So we worked a lot with Kill Kilbo Elementary School and the um, Hal Jensen uh, Memorial Rec Center over on Isabel Street. We see it in uh, beautification projects, beautification programs. We invested very much so in our resident um, leadership programming and our, and our board. And so we weeded out bad things and we see it in good things. And so we've now passed that stage and we are in our growth phase. So now we want to make sure that the things that we see it in are growing. And one of those was the Market of Dreams. The Market of Dreams was opened approximately 10 years ago. Um, we had help from NASA and Moonshot on top of the hill to do the background work to implement this. The Market of Dreams is a micro entrepreneurship center. What we do is we train people to start their own business. Um, and we do that as a way to address generational poverty in our neighborhood. Because even though we weeded out bad things and we seeded in good things, we still want to address the issue of being the poorest neighborhood in the city of Flagstaff. 
And, and we've had some phenomenal success with the market. You know, if you've ever eaten at Tres Amigos, um, they came through our, um, our incubator program. Uh, we've had numerous people who have um, soft baked goods, home baked goods, leather works, bath and body products. We have partnerships with um, the family community, including several of the shelters here, um, both projects as well as Sunshine Rest Community, as well as partnership with uh, Quality Connections. So what happened uh, during COVID, the reason why we first came before you all, is that during COVID our landlord died. And um, the new landlords uh, that we, we got, his family members, um, decided to take our rent from approximately $1,500 a month to $1,400 a month. And that was uh, too much, so we moved. And we had the opportunity to move across the street and occupy uh, the old Redwood Saloon, the bars, the historic bar that closed down uh, just before COVID, um, when the owner passed away, Chuck Foley. So we have been diligently in there every weekend, every Saturday for the last, I think it is now 18 months, rehabbing uh, this particular space. And I think it's really important for people to know that the people that are in here doing this work um, are doing it pro bono. They're from the neighborhood. We say the neighborhood um, as all, all over Flagstaff and also outside Flagstaff because we're definitely sunny side up. And we believe that the way to address um, generational poverty is through small business ownership. Because even if you don't start your own business, the skills that you learn um, translate. And those things translate into a higher paying job they translate into an increase at your current job. And they also build resiliency, right? In order to be an entrepreneur, sometimes when we think about entrepreneurship, we think about the business side of it. But we don't think about how many times those entrepreneurs failed and got back up and started again, right? We don't think about the creativity it takes to be an entrepreneur. So we are pretty excited about this particular space. This particular space is like four times bigger than the space we had before. Um, and so there's just a bunch of us being happy. Um, you'll see at the bottom, um, bottom left hand corner of your screen, we put up a temporary market when we were doing open houses. And so you kind of see what the different people that are in the market and what it is they are making, selling, and creating. Now, one of the things that um, the Market of Dreams does for the 4th Street corridor, um, there's five different components to the market. You know, the first component has to do with um, our training and development of entrepreneurs. Second part has to do with the joint retail space. Um, not everybody can afford their own boutique store location. So that's why we have a co-op where people come in and they volunteer four hours a week. And that's what runs the market, the people who are in the market. They put in their sweat for that. We also have a, um, a full, uh, it's a community kitchen. So individuals who are interested in home-baked goods and food-like products, they have the ability to use that. We have our community space where we do our workshops, our lessons, our classes, those types of things, our dances, our celebrations, or whatnot. But the fifth component has to do with the redevelopment of the 4th Street corridor. Because the idea is that you are going to come out of the market, and you're going to go into one of the empty storefronts that are on the 4th Street corridor, and you're going to beautify that corridor. I don't know how many of you were here back in the day, but 4th Street didn't always look the way it does now. And so I think that's where um, the beautification, where BPAC comes in to the overall discussion. One of the things that we would like to do inside the market is we have a lot of white space um, in this market. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of walls, right? A lot of new walls. You know, the market is for everyone. So the first project we wanted to chat with you all about was putting together a mural on the inside that's reflective of the people that live in our community and that come in and out of the market. But the idea is we were going to divide the white space that we have with these new walls into 10 to 12 sections. And then we were going to do a call for artists, right? And the artists come out and it's like, okay, are you setting side up? Do you understand our mission? Do you understand our vision? Do you understand what we're doing, right? Okay, and your name goes in one, in one hat, for lack of a better word. In the other hat, we were going to put numbers that correlate to the numbers on the wall, the spaces, right? So then you're gonna draw the artist and you're gonna draw their space. That is their space to create a mural that reflects what goes on in this building, in this particular, what we're doing in here, right? Um, I, also, I forgot to mention that we do have a youth component that's part of the, um, this year's workspace. We have a youth entrepreneurship program um, that runs out of there. 
And so then what happens is you would go around the wall space and you'd have each of these murals that reflect what's going on inside. And then in the in-between space where the murals come together, that's where the artists are gonna be working together to tie those two together. So then when you step back, you can see a reflection of everybody. The concept is when you walk into that space, you need to be able to see yourself. You need to be able to see your dreams, your hopes, some of the things that might stress you out, but your goals of where you need to get to. You need to be able to see your resiliency and the fact that you're accepted and the, and the fact that we are a community, we're cohesive, and you are not in this alone. That's the concept of the mural that we want on the inside of our, of our market. We did have a mural um, on the inside of our last market, as well as the floor. The tiles that made the floor did a complete mosaic on the floor that represented that. Uh, we do have a book. I apologize. We have one copy left because we created a book and we had a chance to sell those for fundraiser. Um, but hopefully, one day you all will come and visit this spot and you'll be able to see that. Um, also, on the outside of the building, so that was step one, right? Making sure that the space is um, vibing, right, for lack of a better word. On the outside of the space, um, there's two different projects we would like to do. The first one has to do with the back alley. Um, the uh, back alley uh, is going to be part of our patio outdoor experience. And so once we get down the inside on the back, we've already, we've already painted over uh, one of the control boxes, electrical, electric boxes. Our color is purple, as you see. Um, and so uh, the idea is we're gonna clean that space, so that the benches, put the concrete barriers. Um, we have a uh, request to see if we can get a second food truck to park in back, which would then even expand our new kitchen even further, further. And we would like to do a mural that reflects that, right? The concept of what's going on, mostly related around food in the back. In the front, um, the front part of the, of the building is one that faces off. We also want to do another beautification project, and that would include not only a mural on the front of the building, but also a parklet space. I believe that's what they're called, you know. We want to bring in, um, you know, plants and flowers and things like that that kind of pull that essence into it. Um, at our previous location, we didn't have a Wednesday market. Um, it was like a bazaar type of a thing. Sometimes we had um, food vendors, or sometimes we didn't, uh, but we want to kind of just tie that all on the front because it's our goal to have a, another um, big so I think I covered everything. The only thing I didn't mention was a unique partnership that we had that we were hoping to reestablish when the market reopens. We have a partnership with the Quality Connections. And so uh, Quality Connections, they work with individuals who have certain specific, um, um, what I hate to say challenges, but you know, they just need a little bit of extra help. And um, we develop, develop mentally and um, physically those types of um, challenges. And uh, they were coming to our market. We're really excited about the partnership. Because of some of the changes here locally, um, they were not finding workspaces or training spaces that they had in the past. So they were coming to the market Monday through Friday from 9.30 until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And they were using our market as a retail training spot. So they were learning everything to do with running a retail store. The cash from the cash register, the cleanup, the stocking, the merchandising, um, the cash counts at the end, the balances, you know, those things like that. It was a unique partnership, one that we were very proud of, one that we greatly appreciated because then it allowed the market to be open while many of the market members were at work. And so then they covered the evening and weekend shifts. So I think that's um, all I have to say. I think I covered everything. Yeah, I would want to know, uh, Dr. Evans, is tell me a little bit more about this back outside space and front space. And the reason I'm asking is because, you know, we had to turn down the beautification and action grant because the legal department said that it wasn't publicly accessible the way the policy guidelines for that particular grant were written. It doesn't mean that we might not figure out some other avenues, but that was a problem. The front and the back, I'm not seeing the same problem because I think everybody here was excited about all the participation you have, you know, um, the program. So we kind of wanted to get a full picture so that we can go out and, and figure out what we can do. Um, and I know you're already applying for capacity building grants with Creative Flagstaff because I'm on that committee. So, so you know, I, you know, 
I, I know you're aware of a lot of the other opportunities in the city, but just tell us a little bit more about the public accessibility of the front of the building and the back of the building. And I'm just going to just dive a little bit into the inside of the building, just also to help you understand that part too. Not that you don't understand it, but maybe to help people if they're listening understand that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. The Market of Dreams is open to the public. The door is always open. You do not have to come in and buy anything. You can come in and just sit. At the last market, we had free internet because that's an issue in our community. And so there's tables and chairs, there's a pot of coffee on. You're welcome to come and just hang out, like it's a bookstore or something like that. But I don't have to buy anything. So I just thought like I, I maybe need to just mention that. They're legal. Um, and then, um, but does the market itself close? Certain hours. Oh yeah, it's closed at certain hours. Um, and so like we were closed on Sundays, we were open Monday through Saturday from nine o'clock until seven. Okay. So yeah, so it is the doors do close. Okay. Um, and so the outside, the back, the concept outside is that we want to set up our patio. We want to um, have a mural on the outside of the back to represent the food uh, component of the market. Um, we would like to get some of the concrete barriers um, that you see that seem to be a lot in Blackstaff, unfortunately, because of the money. But at some point, maybe we can get a couple of those. We want to paint those as part of the mural and tie them in. And so you would have um, the alley, you'd have the concrete barriers, so there would be the ability for people to actually sit and feel safe, right? Um, and then you would have the whole back part of the building that is our market, um, reflecting food, people meet together around food, music, and things like that. So that's the concept for the, for the back part of the market. And I outdoor patio, much like you see downtown, um, but decorated, you know, decorated like sunny side stuff. Right. So would you see yeah. access the yeah. patio? Can you access it from this, just from the inside of the market? Right. Oh, it's on the outside. It's literally in the alley. So there's like- it's literally in the alley. Yes, it's on the back part of the building that's physically <laughs> in the alley. I'm sorry. So okay. there is a trailer park, the Green Law a Mobile Home Park is behind the shopping center. And then there's like an alley, and then there's that shopping center building. But we're talking about the outside of the back part of the building. Right. And obviously the front of the building is completely open to the yeah. Tell me a little bit more about um, you know these flowers that you envision. I know that you know we have a flowers program, and we have tiptoed into Sunnyside with the gateway with the two tall slender new planters, and we and we keep them into our um, uh, you know, beautification flowers program. Uh, as you probably know, there once was a time for a whole streetscape project for the east side. It's still in our budget. It's just that, as we, you also probably know, that got derailed. It's, it's in an outer year because we've been looking for a way to bring that back somehow. Because uh, some of the private owners kind of just didn't want to cooperate with an entire overall streetscape, but the idea of doing it in parts is something that was brought up by our former chair, uh, Carla McCord, who's coming back on to our commission next month. So it's just something that we're we're looking for opportunities um, to do beautification in the east side. I think we totally like the help of that. You know, one of the things that we are waiting for um, is to get the market open, right? So once the market is open in the location, we feel that we will be a better able then to talk with some of the business owners um, that are within at least that strip mall because we will have a more visible presence um, being paying rent and bring, bring individuals who are cultivating business on the east side. The, the streetscape that you talked about was something that the Sunshine Neighborhood Association was very much involved in, very passionate about, um, help drive, to help fund um, Partnership with the South Lake Community Association and the City of Blackstown. Um, and it was a phenomenal crop project. It was something that we were talking about at our board meeting last Thursday. Um, it was part of a neighborhood um, planning um, process. I know as we move forward with the regional plan, but something that Sunnyside is very interested in making sure um, of what, what does Sunnyside look like. You know, we have some of the older trailer parks in our neighborhood which um, represents some of the cheapest property in the city of Blackstown, uh, much of which um, we believe at some point will be uh, available for sale and have people trying to rehab it. And so we want to have a say as to what goes in those spaces. Um, I'll send people to Forestry, 
you know, the concept of realigning uh, 6th Avenue and 7th Avenue, of creating that pocket park that would be something for like an east side heritage square. Um, the plan also called the Milwaukee Parks up and down Fourth Street, as well as a theme, right? I think that's what you're talking about when you talk about the beautification. What's the theme? Like the I pocket park is actually remaking the whole streetscape. Mm -hmm. So um, we had a conversation about that uh, last Thursday at a board meeting. Um, as we move forward with the regional plan, you will see people um, from our board very active, um, they engaged with that to make sure that we, that we don't forget what it is. That I think we had over 2,000 residents from the area come out, participate in the 2000, from 2014 plan process. It was like, I think it was 2,080 people. That's how many people we had come out to participate in that particular plan that um, did not get part. So it's a different subject. See, I'm like, leave that alone. I'm staying on this one. I kind of want to turn it now over to some comments from the commissioners because I'd like to just hear from the commissioners. As you know, we have some guidelines we have to follow. So I'd like to just hear from the commissioners. As you know, we have some guidelines we have to follow. Um, but I just kind of want to hear about you know, how you feel about you know the market of dreams, you know, sunny side, you know, four street streetscape in general, and you know, just give us the staff some feedback about some directions that you would encourage us to explore. I think it's a really exciting project. I think um, I want to congratulate you on this new having to having to move what you already did, which was really already impressive, and to do it three times as big. Um, I think that's a pretty amazing thing that you've already accomplished, but I see this as an anchor to the 4th Street area that it can really be the catalyst for for revitalization there and having a really unique character, you know, bring that a really personality to 4th Street, or, which already has a personality, but to really lift that up in a, a positive and public, really public way. So I, I'd like to see city really get behind this. I think, of course, the, the, the public spaces are the spaces that have, are really available for us to help, help fund. Yes. But I was wondering, you know, you, you asked about, I mean, there are indoor spaces that we have funded, but they are government, they're municipal spaces. And, um, and is there really no kind of way to partner with the city on, I don't know what your, uh, we have yeah. also done business license agreements with, um, you know, other entities like Cemetery Link. Again, though, they do tend to be outdoor publicly accessible, but in, if this is just something to further discuss with legal, you know, what can we, what can we do? And, and so I just kind of wanted to hear from you guys before I went down and, and, and committed a lot of time. And I wanted you, I wanted a fuller picture of everything that was going on. Market of Dreams. So thank Dr. Evans for, for, for everything she told us. And I wanted all of you also to have that, that vision so that as we, you know, I think things are gonna just keep coming up in Sunnyside, keep coming up in Forest Street. And we just gotta keep rolling this knowledge and you know, directional law. We have two partnerships longstanding. Well, one of them is longstanding with the city that might be helpful when you go and you speak with them. So um, the city of Flagstaff and um, Sunnyside has been a partnership with the Leave It City um, program mm -hmm. for over 20 years. And so we currently get right now as an allocation once a year of about, I think it's um, $5,200 to work with the Flagstaff Police Department and doing like engagement, outreach, um, community policing type stuff. So that partnership has been involved, been in place for a long while. Um, and then we also just recently got the opportunity to sign on to the grant that the sustainability department is doing. And so Sunnyside, specifically the Market of Dreams, and then uh, Murdoch Community Center are gonna be the two resiliency hubs here in Flagstaff um, if the sustainability department is able to secure that funding. And so we'll be working um, within the market of dreams to do sustainability resiliency programming specific to that grant 
and then um, operating as a location that if something does happen, people that can then come to the market um, and be there. Thank you. Then I'll say, uh, well, I understand the, the need to have the requirement, and I, I would probably support that it needs to be public accessible. If we're going to be investing public dollars in it. If there was ever a Example of where there should be an exception to that. I would say, like, this is the example. This is what should be an exception to that. Right? I don't think we should go into a private business necessarily and like fund stuff or inside my office that's open nine to five and fund something as a law. But yeah. I'd say this is one where it's probably worth having the conversation and figure out is there a way to do it? Whether it's changing policy, which I think policy is good. So if there's a way to just sort of What's the good of a policy that we're going to accept make exceptions? But I think this is this is where this is where we should. Again, I mean, just the broader question. You asked a really broad question to start this out, but I'm like, what do you think about Fourth Street? Like everything that we've heard, my uh, grandma's today is amazing, and I think there's probably support around the table, um, and like the outside stuff. Is, I would vote to approve anything there right now, uh, but I think it's worthwhile inside, especially the part of the, you know the artists working together to plan the whole thing, because that's what you said all the different sections. It's like what does that just look like? But task we get with working together to connect with any cost. The conversation around that has to do with we are all different, right? And um, the part we are better as community than we are as individuals. And so then, how do we work together? Some of the, some of those little nuances to make sure things fit together. So there's like a whole reasoning behind the fact that we want the artists that may or may not know one another, taking two completely different minerals, to have to work together as well. That's you know what I mean. Yeah, it's imperfect to your story on how how do we work together to get paint into the building too. <laughs> so I'd like to hear from any other commissioners because I know we have other items and. You know, I, I could probably talk this all night. I think that I think that the question that we're trying to figure out here, and that's why I would like to hear from more commissioners. I think we got support um, from this side that, um, you know. If this is a priority. How how are we going to get it done? We're going to have to be creative about it. Do we have to figure that out in this meeting going back and forth? Can we figure that out at a later time? And um, can you put it before legal before you bring that to our meeting? It, it, I'm waiting to hear just kind of what you guys, what support you have for the overall. Yeah, so the idea, the, the idea of the support that I have for it is that, um, you know, somebody from the commission would, would certainly have to make um, a suggestion during um, budget time, you know, say that this is a priority to them. And that per person probably won't be me because I do do a lot of business over there. Um, you yeah, know, I work hand in hand with Core a little bit in a lot of places, so I'll pro I probably won't be the one to do that. But if it is for the commission, that would be the way to do it. Um, and, and as even a placeholder or to keep it in mind by putting that number in there, and I'll give you an example. We put like a quarter million dollars in Fourth Street. You know. Because we wanted to, we wanted to fix that place up, and I think that's still sitting in the budget, correct? I said we, we, we have East Side streetscape beautification. Yeah, yeah. So, so what it what it comes down to is that that was a placeholder that we put in at one time, so we wouldn't forget about our Forest Street. That was like seven years ago. It's still in there. If if any of these commissioners want to put some money towards the inside of this building as a placeholder, even if it doesn't mesh. Um, the money will be in there and then we can try to make it mesh as time goes on. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that we have to clear that inside the legal report to be put in any budget request that goes to City Council. Just that one. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, um, caveat, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot more to this, but that's the only way as a commission that we could like really move forward with this. I'm just trying to lay it out the, the, pro, uh, the progression. Um, the front and the back, I think, can be handled with a BIA grant. I think that should be done the next cycle um, or when the presenter is ready for that, and then we can decide on that. Um, and I also wanted to give kudos to Coral for, I think she is the reason why we have a downtown flower project. Well, I also feel like I need to make sure that we're talking about Dr. Evans and Coral. I want <laughs> you to know that I'm here, but there is an entire amazing team that's actually doing the market. OK, we got Tina Berger, who's the volunteer coordinator. We have Ward Davis that's like in like step and step and just a whole team of volunteers 
you know, I'm just here for this component of the market, yeah. but I am not the person that's putting this market together. That's one of the people that's helping out. But I think you were the one that got us the flowers down. So. <laughs> it will be very interesting coming back and talking to feedback about the 25 and then we call it $250 million, 250000 Wow, that's been set aside for the 4th Street corridor and how we can maybe do some public engagement. I'm not, the Fourth yeah, Street I'm not sure that that's for the corridor, the 4th Street and Lockett roundabout. Oh, the center of that has 250000 I'm not sure how much the 4th Street. It might have more, it might have less. I don't remember. I don't have the top of my head of this. Of yeah, this and we, it's, uh, it was pretty undesignated. I mean, we were just, we were really just. No, it, it was left it over was from the street right. side. Yeah. Oh, because I'm, I know the side it, side board would love to sit down and have a conversation about how we can help you guys engage with the community to maybe come up with how that could be spent. Good. Chris? <laughs> the, the fourth street beautification and the streetscape, that is a brilliant idea that just needs to happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we all know that. I know, so I'm, I'm, I'm just echoing what we all know. Uh, Market of Dreams sounds like it's a hub in the community, and I'm, I'm kind of with a map on that. I figure out how to how to make it happen, and it might, might be worth doing. And frankly, anything more Davis touches is, is magic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Coral. Have a good evening. <clears throat> Moving forward to the Absolute Bikes Mural Preservation effort. So our next presenter is Ken Lane, and he is the owner of Absolute Bikes. And Ken is here today because there is a beloved Flagstaff mural called All From a Moment Alive, which is on the west side of his building. And while it's not in our collection, it is, um, like I said, beloved to all of our uh, community here and to our visitors near and far. So the mural, and I just have a few slides before uh, Ken commences, the mural is experiencing significant cracking. And uh, this is part of a larger, um, a problem with the building and um, most recently um, there was even more severe cracking on uh, the front, the entrance into the building. And so we invited um, Ken here today to speak more about his planned preservation efforts uh, for this particular art piece and to see if um, BPAC um, might offer some possible preservation support under city guidelines. Again, this is a discussion item, it's not an action item today. And, okay, I'm Ken Lane, I'm the owner of Absolute Bikes. Um, so, Absolute Bikes has been in business since 1989. And 2007 8, um, we moved into the building on Route 66, which used to be over on North San Francisco Street. Um, I was able to buy that building starting in 2010, but I did, I was committed enough to pay for the mural in 2007. Um, and uh, yeah, so I won't actually own the building for another 10 years or so, but. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the artist, Lyle Motley, is an old friend of mine. He used to live in Flagstaff. So when I got a hold of this building, it has a 110 foot wall facing um, W.C. Riles. And so it seemed like a natural place for a mural. So I hired Lyle to paint this beautiful mural. And uh, the original surface when I bought the building was um, a real rough, coarse stucco coat that was not suitable for painting on. So I hired Outback Stucco to recoat the building, and that seemed to be great until the last few years when it started cracking. Uh, and recently, a big chunk has fallen off the front of the building, 
case from 66, where the absolute bike sign is that a B of absolute bikes has fallen and shattered in the parking lot. Uh, so uh, the mural is still hanging on the building, but uh, it's not going to stay there forever if nothing is done. Um, I've talked to various stucco companies about fixing it. Um, the problem is there is nobody really fixes stucco. Uh, the preferred method is to start over again. Uh, it was originally done without wire lath, which is what holds stucco onto buildings, it seems. Um, so I got a proposal from Outback Stucco to redo the front of the building correctly, um, which I'm going to do because uh, all I have to do is repaint the absolute bike sign, which will cost some money, but not what it would be to repaint the mural. I have talked to Lyle about repainting the mural, and he was not stoked on that. <laughs> 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 he spent about six weeks of 10, 12 hour days on that wall, and it was it was hard work, and it's a masterpiece, and he shouldn't have to redo it. So what I'm trying to do is save it. Uh, so I got this, I made a few copies of it. There's a few copies of the proposal from uh, Dave at Outback Stucco who um, he has this idea that he can inject in he adhesive into the wall behind the stucco where it is separated from the it's a concrete wall underneath there. The building is actually over 100 years old, so it is a pretty historic building. Um, but uh, it's, you know, it may or may not work. But I figure it's worth trying because it's going to cost uh, probably six to ten thousand dollars all told to uh, get him to do that work and get Lyle to come and touch up as necessary. Um, the alternative is to take off all the stucco, get it recoated, hire Lyle to come back and repaint the whole mural if he'll do it. But he said he will, but maybe not for a couple of years and. I'd be in for probably closer to $100,000 for that. So um, anyway, I figure it's worth trying. And um, David Outback Stucco is willing to do this pretty soon, which is good because it's, you know, it has to be done before anything falls off. Um, so if you guys want to help with that, I sure appreciate it. By the way, there is a photo back and go right there. Yeah. I enjoyed for many years. I used to sit at this table for a long time on the traffic commission and bike advisory committee for many years. So, so and uh, actually, when I left, I didn't get a cool glass. <laughs> <laughs> There's one down here. In, in, in this picture illustrates it. This is something that we've been going through as we've been starting our art collections program on the official program. You know, what belongs to us, you know, officially as the city, if it doesn't, but this is a mural that's been in our public art room that we promote in our educational materials. Um, and so here we go. We're, we're in a quasi, we're in a quasi space. It clearly right. is a private property. It was clearly funded. It wasn't funded with any BIA grant. It wasn't, there, there isn't a corner on it. Um, on the other hand, it is clearly in, in the public space. Um, it is something that we could approach legal about a business, a, a license agreement, you know, and I, I have to talk with Lyle about, you know, whether he would agree to that because there's these stipulations, you know, about paying the city back if it falls apart two years or something like that, which could happen. Which it could do. And so we have to explore all, all those. But just like with CenturyLink, we're funding that on private property that, you know, it's clearly in the public realm. So we don't have the issue that we had with the inside of Market of Dreams. So I just, you know, I don't know if you guys were aware of this. 
obviously it's you know um, something that has some urgency about it, which is why instead of you know kind of bringing it up at the you know retreat, and I'm bringing it up you know right now at this at this moment. So um, you know staff wants to hear your comments and wants to hear your you know feeling and and you know I mean obviously we have a business owner here who has you know been very committed. Um, you know, to the artwork, he paid for it all by himself originally. So we don't have a, you know, business owner doesn't have a stake in the game like some of the other things that we've come come up with. So that's why I felt good about bringing it to you. Yeah, we don't have at this point guidelines for public private um, uh, partnerships. No, but we have entered into them. Um, uh, we have entered into them like we are with um, Century Lake. It's just kind of where the, if a project comes up that wants to be done and it requires a public private partnership, um, we pursued them. And I haven't looked at all of them in the past, um, but just the ones that I know of since I've started here. It seems like that it's a good area for us to kind of develop, you know, mm -hmm. as long as, you know, the art is not being used as advertising space, um, you know certain caveats. Right, right. And yes, uh, you know, there are certain things, if it's a sign, you know, a sign under the sign ordinance, then yes, we are prohibited from you know, getting involved. And I, and I suppose there would have to be a, a legal rendering on that just because it does have a bicycle in it. But I know when they were doing the mural about uh, the toasted owl, just because it had an owl in it, they didn't, they, it wasn't a sign. So, I'm fairly certain that it would pass the art artistic test here. I, I can't swear it because I'm not the legal person and I'm not the sign person <laughs> who makes those judgments. But I do know we had a toasted out mural that kind of did not have to be required to be a sign. And I imagine this wasn't either because it was allowed to go up. Yeah, in fact, I, I, yeah, I was going to say before this commission in 2007 to get approval to have a mural painted on the wall. Uh, because I am in the downtown historic district. Um, but I had to promise that it wouldn't be a song, and it's not. It's got the text. It's merely <laughs> a beautiful piece of art. Right. And what are our options given, yeah. given the time sensitivity of the situation? It, it would be um, to go to legal and see if the business license could be uh, drawn up. Um, if it was just for paying for, um, you know, the mural touch up, which was under $5,000, there's no problem tax selecting files to do so. Um, would it get into that? If we're under $5,000, we're in drug select territory. Um, so would it have the procurement to do? It would just be a matter of figuring out this uh, business license agreement. That would be required. I mean, the city would require that for funding. But if I'm reading that, I mean, we're in a discussion point right now. So then yes. the commission couldn't really make a decision until next month, right? And I'm reading on the, this quote, they're talking about having it done before monsoons hit. So we're talking about like in the next, like a matter of weeks, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if I can execute it in a matter of weeks. It, 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 it well, you know, might yeah. But the thing is that, you know, as far as a bunch of, I mean, approvals, um, you know, I always look for the commission for approvals when I can, but there is city manager approval, you know, uh, you know, for projects as well. Because, you know, we have the future project funds. We have, we have, here, we have maintenance funds. That you know, this could easily fall under. So you could do, use that authority or whatever. Yes, necessary. Would it be similar to like a invoice grant or something? To where mm -hmm. just kind of yeah. Um, I think that we've gotten a lot of uh, reasonably cheap public art off of this building for such a long time that it wouldn't be a bad investment for us to kind of give back a little bit if we can. And I'm ready to do whatever I got to do to support that. Thank you. It's a beautiful piece of art, arguably one of the most visible pieces of art in the yeah, entire city. So, and whatever we can do to make sure it stays that way. Are you familiar with the Heritage Preservation Commission? 
this building is 100 years old. We do have a historic facilities and science grant program. It's a match program. So, <laughs> you know, good. 10 grand, I mean, your stucco could be taken care of by that commission. I mean, 10 grand, it's, it, like I said, it's matching funds. But if you go over 20, you know, city can pay $10,000 for that. Um, if it qualifies, I mean, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, it's going to cost me about 14000 just to redo the front stucco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just another option. Yeah, it's, yeah. Another funding revenue. Thank you. I, I was not aware of that grant. Yeah. I'm not sure uh, our BBB funding yeah, it's in our budget, for, but, it, yes, but it's under Mark Brevis and yes. historical yes. preservation, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Let's make sure that um, I'll get that ready. information. Absolutely. Okay. Any other discussion, folks? If not, we can move forward to the final design uh, PowerPoint of the traffic si signal cabinet at West End Dortha. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Very much. We will be thank you. Again, sorry. Miles the artist. I know. I have dyslexia. <laughs> It's just fruit. Thank you, Mary. No, thank you. It's just the arrow. Of course. No, guests. We just take it. Yeah. Our true cultures of Should I get started? Yes, please. Okay. please. So we're at the Northwest and East Dortha traffic cabinet. Um, as we know, Kiara Scabeland um, uh, awarded this location. And we wanted to just review how we got to the final design. Um, we had uh, discussions with the selection committee about the use of the word amen in uh, the quote by Emily Dickinson. So we brought it to our city attorney. And while, while we were there, uh, the attorney also mentioned that this excerpt of this Emily Dickinson poem had to be in the public domain in order for us to use it without having copyright issues. So that set us in motion and we researched to find whether the poem was in public domain, which we could not find it. But we did find some resources for the artist to pursue getting permission to use this part of the poem. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you that apparently Emily Dickinson is one of these authors that literally poem by poem one poem can be in the public domain and the yes. other will not. So it is almost strange. impossible to find without going through this Harvard resource to find out even if it is in the public domain or not. And whether right. you need and then get permission from them. Yes, it was a rabbit hole. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> um, so then we had a meeting with Kiara to review her options. So that we could better assist her in making a decision on how she wanted to proceed. Um, so the first option was for the artist to take these resources and to check and see if she could get permission to use the material. And then the second option was she had created an alternate version with the word bloom on the side panel in place of the poem excerpt <laughs> as an alternate design. and she decided after all of that that she was going to go with her second option so i wanted to so this is what it looks like without the poem uh, it has bloom instead and uh, the other side is the original side that she had with the word rise and this is being currently um, 
printed by Film Tech and should be installed soon. But we wanted to review how we got to this conclusion with you all. Thank you. Comments? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we thought. Yeah. It does look like how it was meant to be. So it, 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 I think it, the solution, you know, really worked. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? I really liked it as well. I don't miss the poem. Thank you for doing that work. <laughs> so there's no this more discussion. We can move forward to the work plan, Jenna. Yeah. So even though, you know, I come tonight and we put on two items that are discussions about even more projects, we have to talk about the 24 FY 24 work plan that came together out of on the budget retreat and um, also things that came down, you know, from the city itself, um, from staff, upper management. And um, so I kind of wanted you to see the result um, of the work plan. And as you know, as we've been preaching uh, for the last two years, full capacity with three uh, full staff members is 18 projects. We are still above that with really no room for these emergency emergency projects um, that's, uh, you know, periodically pop up. So something, you know, will go during the year. I just have to, you know, tell you something will be delayed, um, you know, because it, but sometimes that happens spontaneously because of the underlying projects. So um, I can't totally say tonight what that will be, but I, I, I did something a little different this year. I color coded. So purple is things that re reoccur every year. All right. And then she can scroll a little bit. I or my scrolling. Let's see. Yeah. this one. Okay. And then the blue is things that we started last year that are continuing. And the green are things that are new, you know, that have been initiated. So we're at 22. And then we've got that downtown mile in Rio de Flag, which are ongoing, and we just don't know when they're going to pop up. And then I kind of listed what's waiting in the wings, you know, that we already, you know, ranked at our budget retreat as kind of top priorities for FY25. And that's just to kind of give you a little view about where we'll be go, you know, going unless you guys re reprioritize things dramatically, um, you know, at the upcoming budget retreat. Um, and so uh, one of the things I'll just say real quickly that downtown connection our crosswalk, which was originally in the FY24, got bumped down here because legal pulled it from council when it was up for their approval and it's in legal possession and discussion, and I don't know when it's emerging. So I went ahead and just pulled that one. What, why did they pull it? What? Why did they pull it? Um, because one of the attorneys, even though legal was afforded many opportunities to review this during the last year, suddenly saw it for the first time and had some concerns. And that's why they pulled it. And I. They uh, are looking at all the materials that I sent them and um, and the federal guidelines. No art crosswalks fit the federal guidelines. Cities, some cities are very conservative and say, if you go outside the federal guideline, we are at risk of being sued and we will not do it. Other cities say they're guidelines and actually there's studies that show that these are crosswalks actually are generally safer than regular crosswalks, that the attention that they bring actually makes them more visible. Um, and so there's many cities across the entire United States that do our crosswalk program. Um, right staff has traditionally been one of the conservative cities and um, the nudge um, is there and I don't know whether it'll succeed or not. I have heard. Mm -hmm. Just rumor 
that that is not going to happen. That instead there is seeking a crosswalk kind of thing uh, by FALA in order to slow the traffic. Okay. There. there is an application for a Bloomberg grant for a traffic calming. Um, but again, I don't know how successful that will be. And um, but it definitely has um, we uh, said that we would maintain it if they were able to get the grant and go forward. It's Metro Plan is who's applying for the grant. Um, and um, but again, legal and traffic engineering have not weighed in. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Can, could we nudge them? Is there anything appropriate we can do? <sighs> I believe. Other people are nudging, but I don't know. <laughs> yes, Heidi. You, you can help can you, out. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> part of the, the, the art on crosswalk issue happened with, um, and you can thank Discover Flagstaff, Jana. Um, Years ago, we did a art piece in the middle of downtown outside of um, mm -hmm. the Weatherford Hotel, and it was just to show the different seasons and to make it where if you were up on top of the Weatherford, you could actually do a selfie that showed this this art walk um, art on the on the ground. And I can tell you, um, it made the front page uh, three times of the Daily Sun. And it was something that I couldn't believe would get that much attention and dislike and um, uh, talk about abuse of funds, things like that. So I would have to say this is part of the reason why the legal is probably taking a, a, a stronger look at it. And then to help understand legal a little bit. Um, we have significantly way more projects, capital projects, beautification projects, you name it, contracts, than we do attorneys. And so that's part of what we're experiencing as well, that even though we might get something in front of them in a very timely manner, they are, they're just bogged down, quite honestly. So that's unfortunate for you to all have to, to deal with that, but they're trying their very, very best. But I can tell you, I know this is why that one got snagged was because there was such a controversy um, when we were trying to do this through Discover Flagstaff. And um, I think they're just trying to take an extra a uh, little bit more time so that everything that you do um, isn't for for not. And, and quite honestly, we only spent eleven thousand dollars to do this this wrap on the ground. And you would have thought we spent eleven million the way the community acted. So. I think it really does um, make sense to take a little bit more time and to let legal do what they need to do and then come back to you. So I hope that was helpful, but I I, I have experienced this before and um, it, it really is unfortunate. It makes a, a really cool project not seem so much so fun afterwards. So it's great to just dot our I's and cross our T's. Right, and I really appreciate that because we do keep legal very busy with all uh, with all our contracts and with all our projects, and that's why you know we tried to get it out in front of them last summer, and you know, but until it was on council, it didn't you know really get their attention, um, and that's why I've just I've deferred this project to FY25. Um, it you know I'm hopeful that it's still going to happen, but I just took it out of FY24. Um, so I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that. Um, but let's, uh, I just, you know, maybe there's a few things we'll, we'll, we'll go through. Cause, you know, I sent this out. I know, I think the, you know, the projects that repeat every year, uh, this group, uh, something I'll have to go over with the new commissioners a little bit more, but you guys are very familiar with what we do every year, the beautification and action grants. Um, you know, sitting on these arts and sciences grants committee that Commissioner Zucker sat on them as well this year. The creative uh, flag staff now is kind of becoming a reoccurring thing. And uh, Commissioner Garcia was, uh, you know, on that uh, festival grant committee uh, uh, in addition to myself. Um, expanded use of the right of way in historic core, 
you know, we there's just things that always come up. The flower program came out of here, which is now a major program all in and by itself. Um, and, you know, we're going to get new planters in this Aspen Alley. Oh, and by the way, the um, the owner is fixing the Bruce Aikens art wrap there that you see before it got hit by the truck and had to <laughs> replace part of the front of the cabinet. So part of the art is off, but it will be it will be replaced. Let's so keep going forward. Thank you. Of course. And then um, one of the things that is reoccurring, always going to be reoccurring, but it has been more new this year um, is uh, Kristen in her role as our arts collection manager started to uh, you know, uh, photo, professionally photograph our projects. And we already have two uh, contracts with two photographers. And I think I you're going to a shoot tonight. There's a photo shoot tonight at 8 p.m. Anybody yes. wants it? <laughs> <laughs> the courthouse, uh, we got the day shots, now we're getting the night shots. Um, that's going to, it's going to be in all of our materials, right? It, it's, a, it's a foundation for all of our materials, but that public art band desperately needs to be updated with our new projects. So, because um, we've had so many come online. Um, so keep scrolling. And then the traffic signal cabinets has now become, after your guys' input at last October's retreat, a reoccurring. It, you know, we were going to stop it after the last time and we've decided to keep going. Um, so now a sad thing that is not done. Uh, the airport, this was supposed to be done. I was, this was not supposed to be in here. <laughs> the fence is beautiful. It's absolutely wonderful. It's living by itself in a way it, you know, it's carrying the space. Um, but we are redoing the medallions because of the shortages in, in, in the procurement. They just finally hired another new person who's starting on the 26th of the month. It's just been a lift in order to get um, the, the sidewalk part redone. And so um, we, we're just going a little bit different direction than we first thought we were going to be going. And it's just um, been working with procurement. They all on our side, uh, been really supportive. They just haven't had the manpower to help us get some of the, you know, contracting through yet. But it's coming, but it's probably not going to be done until October now. Um, the bicycle niche, uh, we're, we may be getting a small goal um, because uh, Capital Projects just lost staff. And I, I, this, Heidi, you couldn't have said this more perfectly tonight. We have all these projects, we're ready to roll. We need partners in order to do them in the city. And we got fully staffed this year, but not everybody else has. And so we're hitting that on some of these projects. But I think that this project is of the type that our, per, our project management can carry it a long way. We can do without the capital project manager, maybe until we get to fabrication. So I think we're gonna continue to work on design without them. Hopefully they have a staff person by the time we get to fabrication. If not, the design will sit there till it's ready. <laughs> but we'll get we'll keep it going. You know, you know this this project. Uh, I know some people went to the um, uh, the shovel. Yeah, the groundbreaking. Um, and uh, I know Carl was texting me like mad. Uh, from the site and <laughs> asking me how to pronounce the, <laughs> the artist names and stuff. But, you know, obviously this is a, you know, we are in fabrication um, and there's going to be a lot of oversight in this year, but it's going to be kind of sporadic on my part. So we have the glass, we have the sculpture. These are major projects that we'll be doing this year. They won't be complete by the end of the fiscal year. They'll kind of go over into late summer and fall. Um, we are writing the call right now um, for the Indigenous representation at the uh, county park. Um, and we are going to start it as just a temporary project to just for one year, just install next summer um, from the uh, May to October installation. We're working with legal right now to figure out how to do loans in a contract. We haven't done loans because if somebody makes a temporary for it, it's still theirs to take. And then if they loan us an existing piece, we're going to allow either one. 
um, but we're not going to add any arts that has a whole different set of, of, of legal requirements as far as insurance. If something happens while it's on the property, you know, but they own it, who's responsible? We have all those things that we're working through right now. So again, keeping legal busy. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, the little fun booth libraries also um, it both expanded a little in scope because um, you know upper management wanted a little bit more of a concrete a, a, a more of a plaza presence um, but then actually it seems like maybe we were encroaching on the railroad property lines so we're very close to getting an answer to that um, Guess what? It's really actually hard to determine exactly what that line is, um, but we are we are working on that. But it has slowed that project down a lot. So again, that was supposed to be done this June, all complete, but it's it's lingering on longer. And of course, we're going to be doing the Lone Tree Overpass. That's going to take over a couple of years. I'm presenting to council tomorrow. Um, and it you know this is going to be a multi-year construction. It won't be complete until late 2026. And so we're going to have involvement in this project for two or three years. And then the South Side Murdoch uh, City Park, uh, the call to artists is closed. We have 21 artists who applied. And we're going to have a selection panel very soon. We hope to complete this one within kind of a year, design and, and, and fabrication. So, um, uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, Swicer Canyon Roundabout, um, we, we're writing the call. We had a lot of uh, outreach to focus groups, community um, forum uh, surveys already. This may get hung up on that capital project staff availability. We may have to delay that until they're fully staffed. We're in talks with them about it. So it's possible that this is one that Unfortunately, you know, may go to rest for a little while, but we'll we'll see. But our new projects in green, um, and I'm, I'm just this is going to become reoccurring. But launching this software, we have been keeping Kristen so busy on projects, we really <laughs> haven't <clears throat> allowed her to really <laughs> get started on our new software. We purchased it, um, but we haven't really started. Uh, she's still waiting on me to review. Uh, 10 um, entries for this new public art archive, which I still haven't done yet, um, just because of uh, the demand of other things. But we, you know, that is something that we're working on. Um, this is something that I haven't talked to you about. Creative Flagstaff, their contract only has one more one year extension. So then their whole contract goes out to bid again. And so it has to be competitively bid. So we do not feel uh, upper management. We've had some discussion about this that we really need to, you know, survey, um, you know, the nonprofits, the arts and science nonprofits. You know, what's been going well? What would they like to see in a future contract? Um, because we want to get a good idea about how to write, you know. Uh, the, the request for proposals. Um, you know, what should the relationship of Creative Flex staff be to the city? Um, that's an issue that we might have, uh, you know, a consultant or a survey address. Um, and so we need to do this and we need to do it this year in order to have it ready to actually, um, you know, bid this um, in time. Um, you know, I there could be discussion of taking the grants into the city. Um, there's not, I mean, that's certainly a possibility. Um, it would mean us hiring staff and expanding our program. I'm not sure that we want to get com as completely involved because that has, you know, we, we, we probably lobby by nonprofits nonstop. <laughs> um, there's a certain amount that, you know, this distance creates, but that is something that has popped up absolutely has to be done this year. Um, so it, it may, um, and I know it didn't come from our retreat. This kind of came from upper management because it was kind of like, oh, this, you know, this is expiring and we're going to need to address this. Um, we do have one of our monument signs has some dry rot. 
Um, we, we really need to uh, address that really quickly this year. Um, we probably need to do preventative maintenance on all the other monument signs to keep them keep this from happening in the first place. Um, no, no, no. This is the old one. It's by the entrance at the airport. Is that one? And so, no, it's not one of the new ones. But we don't want it to happen to the new one. So we need to get a routine maintenance in place. Uh, then the downtown green. Hey, um, I'm, this is also something that popped up. Um, down, down Business Association has really pointed out that we're overdue to repainting the downtown. Um, this should not be a, a big project, not a heavy lift uh, as far as project management. We just need to get, the, you know, hire a painter, basically. <laughs> so, uh, but it is a project. And then oh, with one-time money, um, we had so much one-time money in this fiscal year that we put into and got approved in the budget to do some kind of program video to promote um, the program and our projects. And so we're going to be looking to do that this year as well. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so you, you can see that we, we have, and so as we go into, you know, the, you know, the retreat, again, I think we're mostly going to be pro pro programming for out years um, versus even too much the next fiscal year. We're in, we're in that situation still. So just wanted to let you know that. For what it's worth, let me say that Great Flagstaff does a great job. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever we can do to empower them and, and help them continue to do a good job would be my two cents. Yes, we just need we just need information. Um, I you know I work closely with Creative Flagstaff, but it it is a city process that it is a competitive bid and there is nothing that can that is the process of, of our projects. It's a it's a big contract. Now I, I imagine that Creative Flagstaff is in the position to do very well in that competition. <laughs> yeah, Any other comments? Yeah. Who wrote that up? Brooklyn, I did. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I liked it. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I built on uh, what uh, Eliza Kretzman did last year. I just, I, I did a little more, more color coding and, you know, so. Yeah, easier for me to read. Categorize. Thank you, Jenny. Video is something that could be used in the uh, promotion of the renewal of the DPMP. Yes, I think that very much for the, you know, it is, you know, that in 2024, the renewal for the um, Dead Board and Beverage um, tax will be up and to the voters for elections. So we can't, can't mean, obviously, for that, but promoting what it, you know, just general educational outreach about what we do with those funds. Just, and we should be doing that more and more. And I think this is something that um, Chair Cruz and I talked about. We really enjoyed being out at that table in Heritage Square. And I think we should be at the table at more um, public events. Um, and we should be out at maybe at least four first Fridays a year, at least once a quarter. We talked about the county fair. Um, I think we just need, we, we can make more stickers and more swag. It's not very expensive. Um, they were really popular. So let's get our get our, our things out there. Heidi, do you have a comment? Um, Chair, thank you. I just wanted to share that we have an internal committee that is putting together the marketing campaign for the BBB renewal. And we will definitely be um, bringing that information in front of this commission to see if you agree. And then um, what we do during renewal is we show a comparison on a lot of our ads. Like for instance, when you see um, somebody that's dining out or enjoying the brewery trail, we let them know that that equates to this beautiful mural that gets to be put in. 
Um, if they're out uh, dining out or staying at a hotel or a campground, we let them know that that helps get those little league fields maintained um, for your children. So what we'll be doing is putting that together in the next six months and you'll be seeing me um, at your commission meeting very soon to uh, share those ideas and to see if you have others. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no more discussion, we can move forward to the Lone Tree Overpass. Okay. And we're going to, uh, I'm, you guys already approved the art concepts in um, December. And I'm presenting this full presentation to council tomorrow. I am not going to put you through the entire presentation. <laughs> You've seen almost all of it uh, before. Um, but I just wanted to point a couple of things that have been tweaked and a few bits of information that you don't have. If you want to listen to the whole thing, you can come to council tomorrow or tune in. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but I don't think I, when we met in December, we didn't, I didn't even have a range of budget for you. Um, except I think I said, it's going to be around at least a million dollars. <laughs> so, but what you need to know is what we're trying to do, and it's not completely done yet, is we're taking the cost with the art enhancements, but then we're subtracting out the base of that same element with a standard treatment. So there would have been a rustification on the cement anyway. So we were trying to separate that out, but as you can imagine, that's a lot of extra work to do that. And it's just so that we can, and we're not gonna be precise, precise. We're gonna get in the ballpark and um, we want to, you know, you know, help them be a good partner with capital, you know, improvements on this project. I just wanted to let you know, um, because I hadn't presented this to you before, that we're looking at a range of 750 to one and a quarter million dollars for the art enhancements as we were budgeting right now. Now we're doing more value engineering, hope to get that down. Um, but we do have an FY24 up to $900,000 to put um, and that's 500,000 in the project budget itself, and then uh, the future 400,000 in the future projects line. So the funding is there, and then I have another 100, 250,000 in FY25. So, you know, this is going to be paid over multiple years. There'll be different contracts that go through, like when they're when they're building the bridge piers. You know, that contract's going to go through to city council and our art elements are going to be in that contract. So it's going to be spread out over numbers of contracts. And I, it's, we're also trying to figure out right now when the, what fiscal years those contracts are going to hit. But I just wanted to update you on that because um, that's a very important piece. So I'm just going to try to get through to some of the changes. Just um, I'm, these aren't changes in design, but they've been more standardized. And this goes to that value engineering so that there's a little bit more repetition, um, you know, in the way that uh, the design lays out so that we could use less form liners. Because again, the cost of each form liner is a lot. Um, that was especially true with this element, um, you know, so. Again, it's you know much more standardized here, turned and twisted, but there's not as you know many individual pieces. And I think we had a whole separate kind of design underneath, and that's kind of been eliminated. We just stayed with the standard um, cut log um, rustification instead of going with one. I think it kind of unrolled. It was like had that element, and it was just it was just too costly. To have that that third part in, so I wanted to let you guys know that. Um, so, oops, they went on too fast. So I wanted to let you know the dangling legs were on. Yay! Yay. <laughs> That's my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the wheels are going to be more like a cut out piece that, that's put in the wall. And then I don't think that this foot's trail. Um, this design has been simplified and also standardized. Um, again, value engineering. 
Um, so, and this, I don't, we didn't have this slide. <laughs> you didn't see that one. Um, does, does the term value engineering ever equate to less creativity? Because it sounds really good, but I don't buy it. Yeah. I'm You're buying <laughs> less of it. <laughs> doesn't even feel good to hear it. It's almost shocking. No, value engineering. No, it, 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 you know what? Um, when you put restrictions on, sometimes on an artist, you have to get more creative, yeah. not less. Um, there's a, a wonderful film and I wouldn't recommend all of his films, but Lars von Trier made this uh, one documentary. And it's called The Five, I think it's called The Five Restrictions or something like that. And he gives a friend, he has to make the same film over and over again, each with a different restriction. Um, and it is amazing what the guy came up with. And so when I say restrictions uh, improve creativity, not to be argumentative. Thank you. I just, I have That's one way to shut up the argument. I think it's a safe, 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 safe approach. I think there's really certain happening. standardizations yeah. and, and construction that, um, that, you know, uh, helps the whole cool. project go forward. I, and is there any way to push back against that to make it actually creative and artful? I think you don't think it is creative and artful. We're getting what we're getting, but it's kind of the bare minimum. It's kind of interesting. It's a, I, I don't think that the rest of you know, I don't think there's been such a individual restification project in the city of Flagstaff. Yeah, it's cool. We've I'm not the, just saying. We've had the standard ADOT design and that's all we've had. Yeah, it's cool. So. Um, just, so I'm, not, these, I'm not as proud of that word. Yeah. <laughs> at all. Yeah. So these parts uh, are, are are the same. They haven't changed. Um, this hasn't changed. I was trying to think. There was one other part. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to point yeah. out this south entry. If you see down below with the square with the green, so there's just kind of a little pocket niche. So this has just had, you know, the design's been elevated a little bit higher. So um, what you see at the bottom with the needles will be what's on the lone tree. Um, it's just that in that other image, they, they, they used a, an older image, but it is kind of a little pocket niche um, on, the, on that side. And then that's on the north side, kind of just an entry feature. And that's what we wanted to update you on. Kim, can you scroll back a few slides where the, um, the cut logs uh, stop? And then there's just a blank wall. That would help the distance of. Oh, you mean at the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah, that's that community space that's being left deliberately oh, blank okay. for the that's community right. space okay. for that's them to right. put things right. in our. That. It's way back. <laughs> I'd forgotten that that was the yes, city center. That's, that's the community <laughs> space. Right. Yes. Okay. It was deliberately left blank. Thanks. Any other comments, folks? Thank you, Jenna, for the update. Yeah, that's a good update, and I appreciate it. I don't, I don't mean to be so, um, you know, upfront about my thoughts, but, you know, I've been to the, all over the country copious amounts of travel in my 30s and it's starting to feel like everything I've seen out there from the you know creative side like this uh you know what do you call it so like plop art this is like our version of the plop art that I've seen throughout the United States just like oh this is what art's going to look like now and it's so generic and now we're going to be just like you know everybody that's moving in here and changing the way Flagstaff is to this like this just this not tasteful palette, um, bringing their ideas and forgetting that, you know, we have our own, that we want to look a certain way and we want to be as different as we can. And I know that it's too late. The uh, planning process is just a little disappointing to me. But I mean, it's what we're going to get. 
And they, I think it's such an improvement over what we've got. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. No, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. But I've seen it, I've seen this all before, and now it's touched Flagstaff. Will be. The changes that you're seeing right now, or is this is how you felt all along? You're just voicing it now. No, um, I was hoping for more in the end. I was hoping that our input would garner a different, a different appearance and more, more of an artistic view. Uh, so I, and so I guess I agreed with it along the way, and um, and that's just where it's at. But seeing it all fit together like this is just a little, and I can see this anywhere in the world, you know. Having it here will be fine, and it looks cool, and it's not staff's fault. Maybe it's my fault for not saying anything sooner. But no, it's it's nice. Do you want to say anything positive? I will say, having grown up in the West Valley of Flagstaff and being subjected to ADOT's idea of what public art is, which is just geometric figures stuck on the stucco wall, having this, and Lori Lundquist is a part of it, correct? Yes, love her. Um, just to bring in an artist of that caliber and have her be able to have that artistic expression here at Flagstaff is so refreshing and visually welcoming to me as a resident. And the expanse of it too is quite remarkable. It's gonna be cool. And all the various elements to it yeah. too. I yeah. you think this is gonna be quite a um, milestone for the city. So. Well, and isn't this a project that they didn't have our input at all at the beginning, right? No, we had to fight just to get in the door. Right, so I mean, you could have nothing. You could have, you could have geometric shapes. I don't know. I like it, but maybe that's my outsider influence coming in and Phoenix sizing stuff of like stuff. I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> I think it looks nice. But I think Anthony raises a good point, and that is, again, how do we, how do we develop a a style that's more characteristic of Flagstaff is more unique, yeah. and um, and I just think that's something that we need to keep thinking about. Yeah, or else we're going to just settle for the for the, what we've had. Just go ahead. I, I think this is beautiful too. But Anthony, your points are well taken. It makes me thump something that that takes it up a notch and makes it a little more uniquely Flagstaff is something for us to keep in mind. I do like this. Is this the kind of project where you do that though? You're dealing with a dot and you're dealing with train you know the bnsf who had to have input on it and what had to be i mean i think that we the work that we do every day does that i think that we have quite a few limitations money in particular on what you can do with a project of this size and with all the partners that are involved it's a when you're doing vast expanse of concrete rail miners are expensive and standardizing them, unfortunately, is the way to afford a project. Um, I mean, I have seen some projects in the world, you know, but I, it's kind of like, I too like think the Silver Bean in Chicago, you know, Cloudgate is phenomenal, it's $25 million. So just, you know, just know that some of the phenomenal things that you see can cost millions yeah. of dollars to do. $25 and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and so the, I know the lizards on the freeway in, in Scottsdale, which you know do have a lot of, although there's a lot of standardization in them too, but there's a lot of un, very unique passages. And I think in the year it was done, it was a six that was six million dollars, and that was done 20 years ago. So, so we're getting it, we're getting a pretty good bang for our buck with yeah, the, um, a, you know, what, do you, what do you call it? We had a budget. Value value with the value engineering. Thank you, folks. Um, moving forward to the two from items, city staff. None. Um, I have a couple. Um, Chris, uh, I want to let you know that we talked about your proposal to have uh, names appear in the minutes, um, and I'm glad we talked about it again at the beginning of this. So maybe in just a few minutes, you can 
clarify so that we ensure that um, that gets taken care of. Um, the other thing is, um, I think the August meeting for BPAC is going to take place in council chambers. Anthony, we heard your request and we're acting on that one as well. Um, so I think it's the August meeting. We'll let folks know, but we did take that seriously and we will um, meet down there at some point soon. I think it's the August meeting. The other thing that Jenna mentioned previously is um, we talked about uh, getting commissioners a little bit more involved in terms of the community um, doing tabling events, doing um, some of these meetings that come up. Um, the one that Jenna mentioned in her announcement is uh, June 14th at 530. If anybody is available, it would be great uh, for you to come to that. And um, moving forward, some of these other meetings, if you are available to attend, that would be great as well. We did talk about um, some sort of polo shirts or name tags, so we'll keep folks abreast of what that looks like. But in the meantime, when announcements are made about meetings, if you are available and interested, it would be lovely uh, for you to, to come to those. And then just keep in mind uh, the idea of tabling at uh, various events around town. I think that would be great for the commission and certainly great for the city. Um, those are the three. Those are the three items from uh, my two from. Um, I don't think that. Councilmember Sweet is there, correct? Uh, she wasn't able to make it. Okay. Did she send any two from items? No, she did not. Okay. Um, additional two from items from anybody um, who is on the commission. Does anybody have a two from item as we um, get close to wrapping this meeting up? Hearing none. Um, Requests for future agenda items. Chris, could you please um, be specific with re uh, addressing your request? We want to make sure that that is taken down appropriately so that we can move forward on that. So, anytime a vote is not unanimous, I request that how people voted is reflected in the minutes. Okay, how everyone voted. Okay. So Jenna will work on that and then um, get back to us on. Uh, I need to consult with the city clerk and that's what didn't happen between this meeting and, and, and last meeting. Uh, too busy with our ex and things. Okay. So. <laughs> Are there any other requests for future agenda items? Hearing none, um, I will remind folks that our next BPAC meeting is Monday, June 12th at 4 p.m. It'll be hybrid in nature, just like this one was. Um, and I will adjourn the meeting at 5.53. I thank everybody for their time. All right, no, it's going to be in July. July. <laughs> and we, we, we messed up. Oh, oh, oh. thank you. Right. July 10th. July 10th. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you. Can't do anything with this, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>